1920s were an age of dramatic social and political change. For the first time, more Americans lived in cities than on farms. The nation's total wealth more than doubled between 1920 and 1929, and this economic growth swept many Americans into an affluent and unfamiliar consumer society. People from coast to coast bought the same goods, listened to the same music, and did the same dances. Many Americans were uncomfortable with this new urban, sometimes racy, mass culture. In fact, for most people in the United States, the 1920s brought more conflict than celebration. After World War I, rural Americans immigrated to cities in hopes of finding a more prosperous life in the ever-growing expansion of American's industrial sector. While the American cities prospered, the vast immigration from rural areas continued to neglect the U.S. agricultural industry and created widespread financial despair among American farmers throughout the decades. This would later be blamed as one of the key factors that led to the Wall Street crash. Herbert Hoover took office in 1929, the year the U.S. economy plummeted into the Great Depression. Although his predecessor's policies undoubtedly contributed to the crisis, which lasted over a decade, Hoover bore much of the blame in the minds of the American people. As the Depression deepened, Hoover failed to recognize the severity of the situation or leverage the power of the federal government to squarely address it. Today, America is in the midst of a frightening moral slump. You are convened here, and not alone, to nominate a president and a vice president, but to declare anew the principles and ideals which must guide our country. <laughs> Yours is the task to stop this moral retreat to lead the attack and recapture the meaning of the word America. No nation could bounce back from a national crisis without profound social and cultural changes. While many undesirable vices associated with hopelessness were on the rise, many families were also strengthened through the crisis. While many businesses perished during the Great Depression, Others actually emerged stronger, and new forms of expression flourished in the culture of despair. The Great Depression brought a rapid rise in crime rate as many unemployed workers resorted to petty theft to put food on the table. Suicide rates rose and prostitution was on the rise as desperate women sought ways to pay the bills. Healthcare in general was not a priority for many Americans as visiting the doctor was reserved for in the worst of circumstances. Alcoholism increased with Americans seeking outlets for escape. Cigar smoking became too expensive, so many Americans switched to cheaper cigarettes. Higher education remained out of reach for most Americans, as the nation's universities saw their student body shrink during the first half of the decade. However, high school attendance increased among males. Because the chances of a young male getting a job were so incredibly slim, many decided to stay in school longer. Oftentimes, sports provided a distraction from the Depression. However, public spending on education declined sharply, causing many schools to open understaffed or closed due to lack of funds. Demographic trends also changed sharply. Marriages were delayed as males waited until they could provide for a family before proposing to their significant other. Divorce rates dropped steadily in the 1930s. Rates of abandonment increased as many husbands chose the poor man's divorce option. They just ran away from their marriages. Birth rates fell sharply, especially during the lowest points of the Depression. More and more Americans learn about birth control to avoid the added expenses of unexpected children. Pop culture saw new trends as well. Despite the cost of an evening out, two out of every five Americans saw at least one movie per week. Classic films like It Happened One Night and Gone with the Wind debuted during the Great Depression. Films like The Bride of Frankenstein entertained thousands of Americans despite the hardships. Radio flourished as those who owned a radio set before the crash could listen for free. President Roosevelt made wide use of the radio technology with his periodic fireside chats to keep the public informed, and a new musical form, the blues, gained popularity during the decade.
Among the programs and institutions of the New Deal that aided in the recovery from the Great Depression were the Tennessee Valley Authority, which built dams and hydroelectric projects to control flooding and provide electric power to the impoverished Tennessee Valley region of the South, and the Works Project Administration, a permanent jobs program that employed 8.5 million people from 1935 to 1943. After showing early signs of recovery beginning in the spring of 1933, the economy continued to improve throughout the next three years, during which the GDP, adjusted for inflation, grew at an average rate of 9% per year. A sharp recession hit in 1937, caused in part by the Federal Reserve's decision to increase its requirements for money in reverse. Though the economy began improving again in 1938, the second severe contraction reversed many of the gains in production and employment and prolonged the effects of the Great Depression through the end of the decade. Depression-era hardship had fueled the rise of extremist political movements in various European countries, most notably that of Adolf Hitler's regime in Germany. German aggression led war to break out in Europe in 1939, and the WPA turned its attention to the strengthening of the military inf infrastructure of the United States. Even as the country maintained its neutrality, with Roosevelt's decision to support Britain and France in the struggle against Germany and the other Axis powers, defense manufacturing geared up, producing more and more private sector jobs. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941 led to an American declaration of war, and the nation's factories went back in full production mode. This expanding industrial production, as well as widespread con conscription beginning in 1942, reduced the employment rate to below its pre-depression level. When the Great Depression began, the United States was the only industrialized country in the world without some form of unemployment insurance or Social Security. In 1935, Congress passed the Social Security Act, which for the first time provided Americans with unemployment, disability, and pension for old age. After the Great Depression of the 1930s, the federal government had taken an interest in the arts. Federal tax dollars were used to employ artists, musicians, actors, writers, photographers, and dancers. The New Deal Arts Project provided work for jobless artists but they also had a larger mission. That mission was to promote American art and culture and to give more Americans access to what President Franklin and Roosevelt described as an abundant life. The project saved thousands of artists from poverty and despair, enabled Americans all across the country to see an original painting for the first time, attend their first professional live theater, or take their first music or drawing class. Many politically active artists worked for the New Deal projects. United by a desire to use art to promote social change, these artists sympathized with the labor movement. In the extreme, their art became a weapon aimed only at exposing capitalism's abuses and exalting the struggles of the working class. In other instances, their commitment to use art to create a better world resulted in social realist works that drew upon the lives of the poor or simply caught the grim reality of the Great Depression era. Most artists were grateful to President Roosevelt for giving them work and enthusiastically supported the New Deal's liberal agenda. Their art reflected this point of view. It celebrated the progress made under Franklin Roosevelt and promoted the president and his programs. It emphasized what America had gained through the New Deal and contrasted these advances with the misery and poverty of the early years. The economic crisis of the 1930s focused the attention of Americans on the lives and struggles of ordinary people. Not surprisingly, much of the New Deal art reflected this preoccupation with the people. Visual artists, writers, filmmakers, and playwrights concentrated many of their creative efforts on the patterns of everyday life, especially the world of work. A recurring theme was the strength and dignity of common men and women, even as they faced difficult circumstances. Artistic nationalism was a prominent aspect of much of the art during the Great Depression. This interest in things American took many forms. Painters painted scenes depicting local history and color. Folk storytellers had recorded traditional stories. 
playwrights created plays about American heroes, photographers documented the daily life of people in America, and writers produced state and regional histories.